guys. Hello, gorgeous. A while ago on this channel, I did a review on a fan edit of the Hobbit movies. A gentleman named Dustin Lee took all three of the Hobbit movies and he condensed them down into a four and a half hour J.R.R. Tolkien cut. I wasn't a big fan of the Hobbit trilogy, but I went bonkers for Dustin Lee's cut and I watch it every year now before I watch the Lord of the Rings extended versions. There was another fan edit with a lot of buzz behind it that I had been meaning to check out for quite some time, and I finally had a chance to sit down and watch it, and it is not at all what I expected it to be. Now if you follow this channel or my other channel, Armchair Directors, you know that I'm a huge old school Star Wars fan. I actually didn't watch the theatrical movies in the 80s, it wasn't until the 90s that I got them on VHS and started watching them over and over again, but being a kid of the 80s, it was impossible to escape Star Wars even if you hadn't seen the movies. I grew up on droids and on Ewoks and the Ewoks TV movies. I didn't really get drawn into the Star Wars galaxy until the 90s. I really enjoyed the movies and I watched them over and over again and it's normal to want more of something once you've enjoyed it, but want a little different take on it. But in the 90s, there just wasn't any other Star Wars stuff. There weren't more movies. Droids and Ewoks weren't readily available on DVD. There was the amazing Timothy Zahn Thrawn book trilogy, which I think really launched all of the Star Wars books. But for the most part, there wasn't that much Star Wars stuff. And so it forced me to go back and rewatch the existing Star Wars material a little more carefully. So looking back on my experience now of the special edition, I think I was more wowed by just the scope and size of the movie than all of the extra little CGI special effects and unnecessary deleted scenes that were reinserted into Star Wars A New Hope. The fan edit that I want to talk about today is Harmy's Star Wars Despecialized Edition. But before I can talk about that, I feel like I need to mention two key words that will be integral to this review. The first of those two key words is excess, which is defined as an amount of something that is more than necessary, permitted, or desirable, exceeding a prescribed or desirable amount. A lack of moderation in an activity, such as eating or drinking, but I think it's also extremely pertinent when it comes to filmmaking. The second word is dilution, and to dilute means to make something thinner or weaker by adding something to it, to water it down, to reduce their intensity. Or in other words, more is less. Now this analogy might be more effective if I used alcohol, but because I'm straight edge, I'll use orange juice. It's like having a quarter of a glass of pure fresh squeezed orange juice. You don't have very much of it, but when you drink it, that is tasty. Now some people aren't happy with only a quarter of a glass of orange juice, and so they add water. And now they think they have a full glass of orange juice, whereas before they only had a quarter of a glass. But they don't realize what's been sacrificed in order to take it from one quarter to a full glass of orange juice. It's just slightly orange flavored water, completely diluted. The power, the intensity, the taste has been completely washed away in order to get a full glass of water. Now the special editions meant well, but I feel as though every time I watch them and I see one of these little fix-ups or these little tweaks, it's diminishing the intensity of Star Wars. Now most people who talk about the Star Wars Despecialized Edition are gonna say the same thing, that it's really cool to see it before it got all messed up by George Lucas, before all of the extra CGI was added, the scenes like the Jabba scene that isn't necessary, or this, the X-Wing pilot deleted scene near the end of the movie. These are all interesting curiosities, but they really disrupt the original flow of the film. When I first decided to do this review, I thought I was going to go really in-depth about all of the changes, about how much better the original version is without the CGI. You see, I've seen the original Star Wars trilogy countless times. I have quite a bit of the dialogue memorized, and as fun as I still think it is, it's been a while since I've genuinely felt anything while I was watching them. One of the most amazing things that we can feel while we're watching one of our old favorite movies is to experience it again for the first time. That's what I had in the theater when I went to see A New Hope Special Edition. Getting to watch it on a big screen for the first time, feeling all of the wonder and awe that I had never experienced before watching it on a small TV. 
When I started watching Harmy's Despecialized Edition, I thought I was just going to watch the same old Star Wars movie I had watched on VHS in the 90s. I thought it would be cool to watch the original version and see it before all of the tweaking was done to make it look more up to date. And I started to feel something very unique after a while. Instead of being taken back to the 90s, I was actually taken back to 1977. Now, like I said, I didn't watch Star Wars when they first came out in the theaters. I was just a baby when the first movie came out, but watching the Despecialized Edition was a very different, unique experience to any other version I've ever seen before. The Special Edition, or the DVD, or the Blu-ray, or any other version I may have seen. This Despecialized version, more than any other one, really felt like traveling back in time to a period where the only Star Wars that existed was Star Wars. The movie just titled Star Wars, before it even had the subtitle added, Episode 4, New Hope. You see, I've been watching Star Wars so often and so long that everything seems to tie in together. Scenes from one movie foreshadow scenes that I know will occur in later movies, or their callbacks to scenes from the prequels. But a funny thing happened as I was watching this movie. Now, I'm not a big fan of the prequels, and sometimes I have to make an effort to not think about those prequels while I'm watching the original trilogy, with scenes involving Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader and the Emperor and Yoda. But I gotta say, watching this despecialized edition, it wasn't even an effort. The lack of sound cleanup or color correction really made me feel like I was back in a theater in 1977 watching this strange new sci-fi movie by this new young director named George Lucas. The scenes involving Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke where Obi-Wan is telling Luke about his father didn't harken back to the prequels anymore. It was a really strange feeling and I haven't felt it in such a long time. There's so much Star Wars content today. There are so many books about insignificant characters. I mean, it might be cool to read a background book about some guy who was only in the movies for two seconds, but honestly, in the grand scheme of things, it's not an important story. And while it might be interesting to learn about these background characters, I have a hard time convincing myself to spend several of my hours or several dozen of my hours reading about an insignificant character going through an insignificant event in the grand scheme of Star Wars. When Obi-Wan is talking about his friendship with Luke's father, there were no memories of prequel scenes. And interestingly enough, there were no thoughts about what would occur in Empire Strikes Back or Return of the Jedi either. I experience so much clutter when it comes to Star Wars these days. Although it's not necessary, it does feel like they encourage you, before watching a new Star Wars movie, to read the prequel book and buy all of the prequel comics, play the prequel game, and if I don't do all of that research beforehand, I'm left feeling as though the movie is incomplete. Star Wars is certainly not the only movie series that's guilty of that. A lot of movie series do that, and I don't like it when any of them do that. You see, I'm from the 80s, a time when you could walk into a movie, not know anything about it, walk out absolutely being crazy for it, wanting more, but not necessarily feeling like there were pieces missing. I feel like before, movie studios and directors would give you a complete film, whereas today, they want to give you a piece. It's almost like a gateway drug. It opens up the floodgates so you'll buy all of the other merchandise. For me, the Star Wars Despecialized Edition was the anti-current gateway film. This thing felt so self-contained that while I was watching it, I had no awareness of Empire Strikes Back or Return of the Jedi or any of the comics or video games or prequels. This thing was all onto itself. That's how immersed I was in this original version. Not only did it sound and look like the original version, I felt like people felt when they were watching the original version. When they mentioned the Emperor, I didn't automatically think of Ian McDiarmid in Return of the Jedi, or even the weird monkey ape looking thing in Empire Strikes Back. It was a really special experience to watch Star Wars and not feel like there's all this other stuff hovering around outside waiting to be consumed. The reason I brought up those two words, excess and dilution, is because that's what I think has happened to Star Wars. I was as excited as anybody a couple years ago for The Force Awakens. I feel like they promoted it as being a return to form, a return to the feel, the essence of the original Star Wars trilogy. And I don't feel as though that was the movie that I paid a movie ticket to see. While they tried to make it look like the original Star Wars and sound like the original Star Wars, it was without a doubt a modern day film. And I mean that in the worst possible sense. It was a gateway movie that felt incomplete, not only because it had two more movies in the trilogy that you needed to see, 
but also because there were books and comics and video games explaining the backstory. So yeah, you didn't have to read all of that stuff going in, but how many people felt left out not reading all that stuff and sitting there going, what's going on? For the people who didn't read all of that backstory stuff, a five minute flashback would have sufficed, but they wouldn't do it because they want to sell books and comics and video games. When the original Star Wars movie was released in 1977, even though George Lucas planned future movies, he didn't make A New Hope with a cliffhanger. There were more places to go at the end of the movie, but the movie felt complete. You could watch it and feel like you got your money's worth, a complete story. Between 1977 and 1980's release of The Empire Strikes Back, there were some comics released by Marvel Comics, a couple of books released, but none of them felt like the missing pieces from the movie. And the reason I bring up the words excess and dilution is because I think that's exactly what's happening to the Star Wars franchise today. So many fans today just want more, 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 more. They experience something they like and the immediate reaction is give me more. And it's not necessarily watching the movie they just enjoyed again. It's give me another movie, give me a sequel, give me a trilogy, give me a series, give me a director's cut, give me a special edition, give me an unrated cut. It's excess, and all of this stuff has only served to dilute Star Wars for me. I was excited as any Star Wars fan when Disney purchased Star Wars and said they were going to make all of these movies and books and comics, and I started to consume all of this stuff. It didn't take long to realize that all of this stuff was just watering down Star Wars for me. Some of the comics were cool, but I started to feel like, does this really matter? They'd rope me in by saying, it's all canon, which means it's all official, it all counts. It's all in line with the things that are happening in the movies. But what I found myself feeling after a while was, you know, this may be canon, but it sucks. It's boring. Or it doesn't matter. It's a thought that had never crossed my mind before because almost all of the Star Wars I had consumed before the prequels came out was great Star Wars. It felt like it mattered. Now I was reading comic books about background characters in these side stories that really don't matter in the grand scheme of the Star Wars saga. It's just too much for me. Fans are being pushed to be completists and collect them all as Kenner urged us with the action figures back in the 80s. But in these past couple of years, I'm finding that this excess is causing a dilution, a watering down of Star Wars. And I'm having to be a lot more selective about what Star Wars I decide to read or watch. So I realize I'm probably in the vast minority here. I know a lot of fans today just want more, more, more. If that's the way you're wired, you might not dig the Star Wars Despecialized Edition by Harmy, because that version definitely adheres to the old philosophy, less is more. But if you're an old school fan and you feel like you've had your fill of Star Wars, this one might be worth checking out because it's not just Star Wars as you originally remember it before all of the special edition stuff was added to it. Like me, you might watch it and feel like not only does it erase the special edition from your memory, It'll erase Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi from your memory temporarily as well. A terrifying thought for most Star Wars fans, I'm sure, but I really appreciated the experience to watch Star Wars again as it was before any other Star Wars existed. What's the opposite of dilution? Purity. Star Wars The Despecialized Edition is the purest form of Star Wars. And here's what I mean when I say pure. Do you know when the last time was when I watched Star Wars without knowing that Vader was Luke Skywalker's father? Never. I've always known. Even the first time I sat down to watch the movie in its entirety, I had heard from other people the big secret. No, I am your father. While watching Harmy's despecialized edition of this movie, I was so transported back to 1977 with the look and the feel of this version, I completely forgot about it. I was actually able to watch this movie in the original way it was intended, before George Lucas had decided Vader was Luke's father. So yeah, that's a pretty crazy feeling, to watch original trilogy Darth Vader and not only not think of Hayden Christensen, but not think of that character as Anakin Skywalker, Luke Skywalker's father. I just thought of him as this bastard villain who killed Luke's father. I loved watching this original version before all of the tweaked special effects. It's a moment in time, and it's really cool to see this version before they try to update it and make it hip and cool and presentable and keep people's attention. So hats off to Harmy for all the hard work to restore Star Wars to its original state. For just one evening, you made me feel like a brand new Star Wars fan again, looking out at the vast, uncluttered galaxy and wondering what was to come. Got something to say about the original version of Star Wars? Scroll down and go to town. And to join the tribe, hit subscribe.
Nerd Mistake.